wrong with this morning? Or not? I don't normally come up here real quiet and reserved and laid back. Normally I'm on fire. And I'm pretty on fire this morning, just a little bit calm. I talked with the students this morning and the little wranglers there about the tumbleweed. And I just have to tell you that a lot can be learned from a tumbleweed, but I learned something this week about a tumbleweed that I didn't know. They claim you can make sauce out of them darn things. I've come to the general conclusion that in the state of Texas, you can make sauce out of just almost anything. But I, I took the time to Google the tumbleweed, and I ain't even going to stand before you and try to tell y'all the Asian scientific name of that thing. It is about this long. But I can tell you that uh, if you ask just about anybody in the state of Texas that's lived around the prairie or out in the western hemisphere, if you will, they'll tell you that these things get plum annoying. That they just kind of blow around and that they kind of travel at their own will in the wind. And uh, I'm telling you, I had a collection of them things at the house. Uh, on our fence line out there, I thought I had a fence, but I looked out there this morning and I think I've got the bush. And my theory was, you know, there was a story about, about a, a Jesus at the burning bush, and I'm thinking seriously about recreating that with the tumbleweed. Because them things just gets to be pesky. But I got to thinking there's a message in a tumbleweed. There's a message. Many of us have had the opportunity to go on through life roaming all over the place, running a million different miles an hour in different directions. And folks, i got to say this. That tumbleweed doesn't really have a plan or a path that it travels. If you look out across the field when they're blowing, they might go this way for a while, and then they might go this way for a while, and they might go up in the air just a little bit, and they might bounce like a basketball. And the only time they come to rest and have any stability is when they land up against an object. Begin to think about that just a little through this last week. And folks, I have to say to you that our Christian walks are 100% like a tumbleweed a lot of times. We kind of blow around and we go this way for a while and we go this way for a while and we go up in the air for a while and we bounce like that basketball for a while and then we run smack dab into something that's tough and hard and won't move and we come to rest and we harp on it and we gripe about it and we belly ache and we moan. And so with that thought in mind, this morning I titled the message, Rolling Around Like a Tumbling Tumbleweed. And that ain't the right path to go. i got to share with you a moment in the life of Jeremy. In the past days, I've hit some pretty tough obstacles that I didn't know how I was going to get through. I've run up against some things, and I didn't know how I was going to come out from under them. I was like that tumbleweed against that fence post. And that's when I began to get close to God again. That's when I said, hey God, what do I do now? And folks, i got to tell you, when I'm up against something tough, shouldn't be the time that I go to God first. While I'm still roaming around and wandering around, that should be the time that I go to God. And I want to share with you this morning that if the only time you go to God is when you're like that tumbleweed up against that stinking post or up against that tree or that hard object, then how can you expect to have quote-unquote relationship with the man? Now, y'all heard me say in the prayer and praise time this morning, I get frustrated when somebody doesn't have a, a reason to raise their hand and praise God. And I have to say to you this morning that when we get, when we get in the trying times and the tough times and the rough stuff, oh yeah, we want to run to God. But we need to build the relationship first. You go, well, what about my problems that got going on, preacher? I'm not telling you not to go to God with your problems because he, we, we teach and preach to leave them at the foot of the cross daily. But what I am saying is that we need to become a more thankful for what we got, simple kind of nation. Not just a church right here, but a nation. You know, we come up with all of this high-tech guru junk. There's one of them right there. I'm not talking about Brad. I'm talking about the camera in front of him. High-tech guru stuff. 
Okay? And we love that stuff. It records memories, right? That's all fine, and good, and dandy. But let's get back to the basics of life for a minute. Let's step back in time just a little bit to when we didn't have computers that go down on us. I have to tell you that I called to find out how much I have in my bank account. I ain't real good at keeping that ledger thing. If you bankers and CPAs in the building, y'all probably cuss me, but I'm glad Tony's not here to hear that this morning as a bookkeeper of the church. But all in all, I, I kind of had a difficulty figuring out how much I had in my bank account this last week. And so I was trying to cash a check, and I wanted to make sure I didn't, you know, boing, boing, boing it. And so I called up there, and the lady said, well, sir, I'm sorry, our computers are down at the moment, and I don't know how much money you have either. I said, well, good, I'm spending a wheel, right? She said, no, sir, that's not how it works. I thought I was just joking with you, ma'am. Don't take that for real. But all in all, that computer had failed. That camera, the battery can go back. Even some of our high-tech equipment that we use this day and age to work the land with. It can go down, can it, Richard? That Matthew Ferguson failed if you had it, brother. Okay? It happens. And so what do we do? How do we get back to the basics of life? I think we need to be thankful for what God's put in front of us. And over the next three weeks, you're going to hear me share with you about thankfulness each week. Because I don't think every one of us on the face of the earth is as thankful as we should be. And you say, preacher, I'm the most thankful man in the world. By God, you still can work on it a little bit. The Bible tells us to, to give thanks to the Lord for He is good as love endures forever. How many times do we say thank you, Lord? Evermore. That's how it ought to be right there. Evermore. Evermore. Before your feet really hit the ground, if you wake up above dirt, not pushing up daisies, you ought to be thankful to be a living. And folks, so many times we take that for granted that and, and we, we do things, we put things. I know I've been a, I've been a wanting to go on a trip. And so I began to look at it on the internet. And I began to plan when the best time to take that trip to be the most cost, the most, you know, cheapest, okay? And so we plan way ahead. How many of you know when judgment's coming? I just want to know. Somebody know when judgment's coming? There ain't a hand in this world that could go up and say that. Now there was that man out in California and he predicted that, I believe it was uh, September 22nd or something like that, I don't remember what it was. He predicted this certain day at the 1130 hour that, that the world was coming to an end and the judgment was coming. He looked like a blue man, didn't he? <laughs> he didn't come when he thought it was true. Okay? The Bible tells us and the reason that none of you could raise your hands this morning on that, the Bible says that no one knows the day or the hour. So what do we got to do? We got to be a little prepared. Okay? The Boy Scout motto says be prepared. Okay? Well, I'm going to say this. If we're running around like a tumbleweed, just kind of going with the flow, la di da la di da blowing around all over the place, we can't be prepared. We have to get a plan going. We have to be thankful. We have to start somewhere. Now I have to say this to you. Lots of people do lots of things in this whole world. But we all have something to be thankful for. I want to share with you from the book of Hebrews this morning. And we're going to tie all this together. I know y'all. It's probably running through my wife's head. But how are you going to bring this one back together? She'll tell me every Sunday when we leave here, we're heading up the road and go, well, how was it? And she'll either say, mm -hmm. or she'll say, oh, that was a good message today. Most of the time, what she says is, boy, you took them all over the earth and then you brought it all together in the end. Well, folks, this morning I'm going to start with thankfulness because I believe that's where we have to start in our walk with Christ is we have to realize that God sent His Son to die on the cross for our sins so that we could, we could have eternal life. And we ought to be thankful for that. If you ain't got nothing else in the world to be thankful for, if your shoes or boots has got holes in them, if you, you ain't got no underarm to your to wear and you stink, if you're sporting the holy clothes, don't none of that don't matter because all in all, you've still got something to be thankful for. A man that died for you. Now I want to ask you this question. 
How many of you would be willing to give your life up for somebody in this room? Many of you can raise your hands because you have loved ones. And now, that's possible. You give your life to your child, or maybe your wife, or maybe your husband, or, or maybe a combination thereof. But now let me ask you this. How many of you would want to give your life up for somebody that you can't stand? Somebody that's an enemy? Because I'm going to tell you something the good book says, and oh, I'm about to step on some toes here. The good book says that whatever you do for the least of the brothers, you might as well be doing that to Jesus. Meaning if you've got an enemy, if you've got an enemy in this other world that you're shunning, that you're kicking to the curb, that you wouldn't help them no matter what, that you don't want to have nothing to do with, you might as well be saying to Jesus, I don't want nothing to do with you. That's pretty harsh. And a lot of you have a problem with me saying that. But I promise you, you can read that in a good book. That it says, whatever you do to least his brothers, you do to me. And friends, I'm going to say this to you. That ought to be the very person that's sitting next to you next Sunday in church. Oh, preacher, they ain't fit to come to church. I've heard that out of one cowboys. Oh, no, I ain't asking that joke. Man. He'd come up here drunk. He'd come up here. And he might cuss in the church house. Let me tell you something, folks. God doesn't tell you to bring the fillet of fish. He says bring the fish. He'll do the cleaning. He'll do the deep boning, okay? He says bring them in. And I would share with you this morning that you should be thankful that we have a God that's like that. Because otherwise, some of us heathens wouldn't be in the church, myself included. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. That ain't right. The 12th chapter. The 28th verse. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. How many of y'all ever torched one of these things? Y'all know me to be crazy, but I'm not going to pull a lighter out in the church house and light when we was out on the barn, I would If you light this joker on fire, you talk about burning bush. Woo! You don't make about three seconds and you're holding the framework. Okay? Our God is that same kind of consuming fire. When we begin to have a relationship with Him, when we find ourselves being faithful and we begin to come to know Him, He'll give you the rest. Well, I've been praying for God to give me a million dollars for quite some time, preacher. Now you've got no memory. Let me ask you something. Are you stupid? Okay. You can't pray like that. You can't pray like that. I know most of you in this room. And if you ask me for a million dollars, and I ain't got it in the first off, okay? But if you ask me for a million dollars, and I ain't ever spoke to you before, I probably wouldn't even give you 50 cents. So how can you expect a God that you've never talked to or had a relationship with, how can you expect Him to give you your money? But I will say this, He's given you a million dollars worth of blessings in life if you open your eyes and see. Okay? What are we thankful for? I want to share with you the footnote in my Bible. It's stronger than I could ever be. It says in, the verse, in, in verse 28, here are five ways to be thankful. We can be thankful that God answers our prayers. We can be thankful that God answers our prayers. There again, I go back and preacher, I pray for this or I pray for that and God didn't answer. I'm going to call hogwash on that. Just because you didn't get the answer you wanted to hear doesn't mean that God doesn't answer your prayers. Okay? Now I have to ask this question to all the moms in the church. Have your kiddos, your daughters or your sons, or the ones that was hatched or whatever you want to call them, have your kiddos ever asked you for something and you said, well, heck no, you're not getting that. How many of you ever told your kid no? Okay? I would say this this morning. Our God is the same way. If the kids ask the parent for something that's just obnoxiously nuts, and the parent don't give it to them, it's because the parent was having a good sense. If we ask God for something that's just nuts, why should we expect that He'll give it to us? Doesn't 
me and he's not answering our prayer. Been praying for a number of years that God would give me a piece of land. That God would allow me to have a great family. And I've got both of them. And I didn't get them when I wanted them. When I was 20 years old, I wanted to have the biggest farm in America. You know, some people want to be the president. Some people want to be a doctor, an astronaut, a lawyer. Heaven forbid. They will not be what we want in the Lord. But you know what? God's got the perfect picture. And we should be thankful that He's got that perfect picture. Because sometimes when we want something, it ain't the right time. And if we got it, whoo, it caused disaster. Had the opportunity this last week to sit with the insurance man. Good insurance farm bureau, by the way. Had an had opportunity to sit with him, talk with him this last week. And he said, yeah, don't believe this, preacher. But he said, I had a man that took out some life insurance. He kicked the bucket, and his 17-year-old son got $100,000. I had to hand him the check. I said, that sounds pretty nice. $100,000. I said, I'll lay you out. He ain't got a dime of it left. He said, he didn't have it a week afterwards. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I handed him the $100,000 check, and he cashed it, and he bought a $40,000 house in Texas. He said, I don't even know how he got that money. He said, it was a miracle. He said, I had to hand him the he didn't have anything to go on, anything to fall back on, because it was given at the wrong point in his life. Folks, it works that way with God, too. Only God is smarter than the insurance company, okay? God is not going to give you more than you can handle. The Bible tells us that. The Bible tells us that He will not put on you more than you can handle. So for those of you that are praying for the million, that are asking for the Ford truck, because that's the best guy, for those of you that are praying for the different things in life that are material and you're not getting them, I have to tell you that that don't mean God ain't answering your prayers. Okay? You need to be praying different. You need to be praying different. And you go, to preacher, I'm new at this game. you got to help me here. Go in time with your prayers. I'm not saying not to voice them out loud or not to say your prayer concerns. I'm saying go in time. God, what do I need to do to prepare myself or for you to prepare me for what you have next in my life? Don't get all specific, God. I want 986 acres. I want a brand new 99 horsepower massive person tractor with the computer screen and the ultra lift and that has got air blowing overhead and a boat system so I can listen to my radio and it's got air ride seats so I don't get no bumps on my butt. Don't worry about that. God, what can I do to prepare myself for you to prepare me for what you have next for me in life? And then if God gives you the 1965 model Massey Focus and 9 tractor that the injector pump don't ride, do right work just right on and you got to constantly be working with the throttle, be thankful that you got it. Be thankful that you got it. Because there's people that ain't doing it that way. There's people that can't farm their ground. You see what I'm saying? Don't roam around wanting all the things in life. Be thankful for what's been given you. God answers prayer one way or the other. The second thing that that verse tells us there in 28 is that we can be thankful for God's provision for our needs. The key in that sentence is needed. We can always be thankful for our needs being provided for. Okay, God provided for my need of eating a little bit more than maybe some of you here. Okay, but God provides the need, not the want or the luxury. And so, when we pray, we have to ask for what is truly needed, which means we've got to do a little soul searching, folks. Stop tumbling around like a tumbleweed and truly get down to business and focus on a little bit of detail and figure out what we truly need. Now, if we were to ask the question, what is one thing you need in life? You really need. And when you ask that to the little ones, they'll say, well, I need food. Or I need something to drink. Folks, that's right. That's the simple part of the answer. We do need that food. We need the food that we put in our body. But that doesn't mean we've got to have T-bone steaks going in, okay? It's all right to consume bologna every now and then. 
Okay? And what I mean by that is, is we don't often do this, but the Bible tells us to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. Don't think you're living in the high life when really you shouldn't even be trying to live the high life. <coughs> i go back to this again. We can be thankful for our, that God provides for our needs. I want you to ask yourself today, what do you truly need in life? I believe you need relationships. I believe you need relationship with God, relationship with family, relationship with friends. Well, I care about people. I had an answer to this. This is great. He said, I, I believe you can live without friends. I don't need them. I said, okay. I said, what do you do when you break down on the side of the road in your truck and you haven't got no jack and you Tires flat and you sit down and you stand and maybe you run out of gas and you sit down on the side of the road. He said, I stick my thumb out. He said, somebody will take me to the gas station. I said, oh, wait a minute. That'd be a friendly person in life, wouldn't it? I said, what do you do if you're in the middle of the desert and that happens? He said, you die. That'd be a good answer. So all of us need friends. Don't you ever believe that you don't need somebody to talk to? I can tell you that Many times, we don't value the relationships that we have. Many times, we do not value that. And we need to. Whether it be an I love you to a friend, whether it be somebody showing up at your doorstep with a squash casserole with domain, whether it be the simple things, a card to say, hey, I'm thinking about you, an email, a text, those get people through days. And folks, let me encourage you in your thankfulness with God to reach out to your brothers and sisters, which is my, one of my points that I want to make this morning. We can be thankful to God for His character and wondrous works that He does within us. Folks, God will give you what you're supposed to do. Fact is, you've got to be willing to listen to what he tells you and take that step. And a lot of times, people want that step to be a little easy step that they can make. They don't want it to be a big giant leap that they got to make. But God calls us to step out of our comfort zone. He calls us to do that to where he can work in our lives. And folks, we should be thankful for that. Many times we're not thankful for that at all. We go, why did you do that to God? He wants to grow you. He don't want to keep you where you're at. I continue on. We can be thankful for our brothers and sisters that God provides us. I'm not talking about blood kin. Now I have to say this. God bless me with a wonderful wife. She stands behind me, away behind me a lot of times, but she stands behind me. And I'm going to say this. She picks up my sight. And for any of you that ain't willing to admit that your significant other, be it a male or be it a female, picks up your slack, if that ain't the case, then y'all need to do a little soul searching within your family. Because I'm here to tell you, I couldn't do what I do here on Sunday mornings, on the farm, at my job, wherever I'm at without my wife. Picking up my slack, don't you use that against me. Okay? And I would say that God places people in our lives to be that person. Some of you get your husband, some of you get your wife, some of you get your kiddos. But God gives us brothers and sisters. And I'm not just talking about blood kin, which I, I have to stop. I told you, I, I'm grateful for mine. But I'm talking about people around you. This morning I mentioned Jimmy, him being an old man today, this last week, hitting 73. He's gained knowledge and wisdom that I don't have. And I'm going to tell you that I sit here before you wearing a hat I don't normally wear. It belonged to my granddaddy. And my granddaddy was always that person in my life. And I remember the day that we put him in the ground. I said, God, how am I going to ever make it without Papa? And I don't know if y'all want to do the stupid stuff that I do or not, but from time to time when I have questions to rise, I'll dial the phone number and try to call my granddaddy. He's been dead five, six, eight, ten years. And I still try to call him and 
asking questions. But like I said, I believe that God puts people in your life, your brothers and your sisters in Christ, He puts in your life to help with those type of re those type of things that come about. And we should be thankful for that. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that if I could be a fly on the wall in Jimmy and Chris's house after some of the conversations that me and Jimmy have, he has to get off the phone and go, you ain't never going to believe what that idiot asked me. Because I have some crazy things. But you know what? He's never not answered. And just as he's never not answered and been there just like a dad, through the good and the bad, our God is the same way. Our God is the same way. Now, you may not hear what you want to hear. And you may not get an immediate answer from God. But if you just pray and ask God, I promise you, He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. You've, you've heard that in many prayers. Believe God and direct And I, as a kid, I asked a preacher one time, I got in trouble, I got hooked for this. I said, why don't we pray and we say, lead God and direct That's all the same thing. Why don't we just say one? Lead me, Lord. Amen. Or guide me, Lord. Amen. But why don't we say, lead God and direct Now I asked that to a preacher, kind of bum puzzled a little bit. My granddad told me, boy, you ain't supposed to ask all them questions. And folks, I would say this. God will never fail you. The most reason you have to be thankful in this whole world. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my kid. I'm thankful for our place. I'm thankful for all that stuff. But I'm most thankful that Jesus Christ gave up his life willingly. Went through a brutal crucifixion. So that I could have life everlasting. Before I was a glimmer in my mama's eye, He did that for me. And if you have not experienced that love, I want to invite you to do that today. I told y'all about a time that I was in Africa in the mission field when I had a guy walk up next to me and grab a hold of my hand. I told y'all that a few short sermons ago. Walked up, grabbed my hand, we walked down the pathway going to a prayer time, and he kept holding my hand. I was looking at that job like, why are you holding my hand? Man, I ain't supposed to hold my hand. Then they explained to me that that was their way of outwardly showing friendship and love for one another in the country. After that, I was all right, okay? I didn't think there was nothing crazy about the guy. And friends, we don't know about that. We do not say I love you enough. We do not become friends with people enough. We have become such a society of skeptical wonders that we, we can't allow friends to be friends. We keep we're kind of like the court system. We, we, somebody's guilty to we prove them innocent. We need to stop all that mess. We need to start befriending folks more. Reaching out to folks more. Bible tells us turn the other cheek to somebody that hacks us off, that beats us a little bit. You go, I can't do that, preacher. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. They was a whooping the snot out of him. Not once did he raise a hand and try to whoop them back. What better example do we have than that right there? We got everything in the world to be thankful for. Tomorrow morning it's supposed to freeze. Right? supposed to be really cold and down in the freezing temperature. When you go outside and some of you here, I'm pre-warning you, but when some of you here go outside and your car goes, uh, don't go. God, why don't you do this to me? God gave you weathermen that have told you it's going to be cold outside tomorrow. You should say, why did I not think and do and prepare myself better? Thank you, Lord, for pre-warning me. Sorry, I boxed things up. You see what I'm saying in our prayer life? You see what I'm talking about? We've got to become internal first. We've got to be thankful first. We don't do that often enough. Book of Psalms, one of my favorite books in the Bible. <laughs> one of my favorite books in the Bible. They sang praises. They sang hymns. And they didn't have a rhyme, or a rhyme to them. They had a reason to them. But in Psalms 136 is the never-ending story of God's love. God deserves our praise because His endless love never fails us. Psalms 136.1 says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. The chorus to that is His love endures forever. 
Verse 2, give thanks to the God of God. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever.